It's a Bumblecast Mini, sponsored by Hero Squad. With the Archie Sonic comics calling the divine bird Gaia Phoenix, I was wondering, is that what the mainline giant bird is officially called, minus the dark prefix? I don't know about official, but it makes sense to me. Like, the whole dark prefix is like a title. It's you know defining that it's the dark version of the base thing. Dark Gaia. So dark guy of phoenix i mean for the longest time it was just dark sonic the werehog thing just kind of took on because the fandom dubbed it that and they couldn't get rid of it <laughs> well i mean that's what he that's what happened <laughs> that's what's going mm-hmm. on when it does that it's like what else are you supposed to call it it's like calling the wii remote the wii mote like yeah that, that's that's what it is don't try and We'll try and retcon that Nintendo or Sega. <laughs> Sega and Marvel decide to collaborate to make a comic about Stealth the Hedgehog, the Spider-Man counterpart of Sonic from the preboot. How would you write his story? What would his universe be like? Who portrays who in that incarnation? How would you expand it and differentiate it from the Archie one, which didn't show much? Doesn't need to be fully based on the Archie one. This is the Spider-Verse after all. <laughs> Was... From what I remember, wasn't Stealth just that kind of weird ninja costume he tossed on and then got arrested because he didn't use any of his Sonic-like skill to try to stay incognito? God, that was a stupid story. (laughs) No, that's the sneak. You're thinking of the sneak, yeah. And not the one that's delightfully from Homestar Runner with an entire musical number by Da Vinci's Notebook. No, 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 no. no. Vastly inferior sneak. Okay. No, stealth was. Stealth. He also had like a nin- ninja costume sort of thing. Hold on, I I should have looked this up. But it was Professor Egg. <laughs> oh wait, was this like the the two panel thing from the Master I, Mogul? Yeah, I think it's very small, a very 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 small thing. Oh, uh, okay, 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 okay. I don't even remember them being named, but. All right, so we basically seem to have... I'm not immediately seeing any spinnerets, so... I guess Sonic with, like, the most literal sense of wall running. You know, unlimited parkour. Lost world on steroids. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Let's lean into the Spider-Verse and just keep him as the Hedgehog. And, uh... Eh, maybe steal a page out of the old manga and have it be Nikki under there. Nikki the Hedgehog is his base identity. And then he dons the blue spandex to become the super wall runner stealth. <laughs> and uh, maybe unlike the other wall crawlers who typically use webbing, he uses just pure speed, gymnastics, momentum, and homing attacks to flit around building to building. Yeah. And as for how to expand it and differentiate it from the Archie one, why well, it's already a pastiche of Sonic and Spider-Man. That's... <laughs> the very foundation of it is referential parody. Yes. I think that alone is enough. <laughs> Peter Sonic can't catch a break. Made a made a deal oh, with the Sally de- Stacy really, really needs to watch her back. <laughs> made a deal with the devil to nullify his marriage to <laughs> Amy Jane. Terrible. <laughs> Awful. what would happen if surge and drippy i mean kit used chaos emeralds what crazy enhancements did they get what would they do with such chaotic power and how long do i have to live to hide to find the candle before being mauled by surge for nicknaming kit (laughs) you can't nickname kit anything demeaning only she can do that (laughs) he's her property how dare you uh The question is, can you use individual emeralds outside of chaos control? You know, clearly Shadow, Sonic, Silver, they can do that. But beyond that, an uh, individual organic using a chaos emerald hasn't really been shown off as far as I'm aware. Um, I mean, okay, chaos, but chaos is weird. Chaos is a weird mutant chow thingy anyway. That's, That's something different. Like, we haven't really seen anybody 
just harness a singular chaos emerald in terms of raw power again that i can immediately think of so they may not be able to and that's not just a limitation on them that seems to be just like in general what about that tails is able to use like tails is able to use one to power the tornado too but that's a mechanical device and the chaos emeralds have a very easy time transferring their energy to machines so that isn't quite, but then again, Surge and Kit are pretty Blade Runnered. So could they tap in given their endoskeletons? Huh. And also Superstars. Yeah, I don't know. The top. Superstars is something special. I can't get into that. Mm. Mm. Will we find out when we play it, maybe? Mm. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. You know, you have a knowing smile somewhere in there. I know it. <laughs> and it might be moot by the time this episode really airs but we're recording it before it comes out so i gotta stay shush <laughs> did you know that crocodiles can slam their jaw shut with 3700 pounds per square inch that is enough to crush metal anyway this question is related to the green croc vector that's him is he able to chew on rock-solid teeth-breaking food? How surprised would his pals be to see this? Are they a bit disturbed about this knowledge? Also, is Vector able to death roll? Yes, I did know. I didn't know the exact number of PSI off the top of my head, but I did know about the bite. Conversely, they have almost zero strength opening their jaw. So if you are able to put your hand around their mouths, they cannot open them. Your grip force is greater than their jaw strength for opening their mouth which is very funny this is also <laughs> this is also assuming you're comfortable getting within that much distance to a crocodile and assuming it doesn't do anything else to you so you know kind of useless fact but there you go uh i mean we've seen vector bite through various badniks and such so we you know that's on point I imagine he can go through any of like the stale donuts they have sitting around the office. Like <laughs> these things are rock solid. They should be in the trash, but you know, donuts are expensive. You, know, you can't just waste food like that. So no, he's sitting there crunching through them, spreading crumbs everywhere, making a big old mess. And the charm sad. Cause he doesn't get donuts. You can't have these. They're rock solid. And Charmy tries it anyway. And he hurts his teeth and he cries about it about that and now they have to go get fresh donuts because somebody just had to eat the stale ones i kind of lost the train of thought here yeah um, <laughs> also death roll uh we haven't seen him do it but i mean why not let him death roll as a treat <laughs> <laughs> sounds good to me sounds good to me press l or r twice to do a death roll <laughs> <laughs> what would happen if metal sonic went to scrapnik island for the sake of why it would go there could be any reason anyway how does it go would he destroy the scrapniks would mecha sonic mark ii fight it personally do any of the scrapniks intervene to help or is it personal between the two bots super depends on the context like if he's sent there purposefully to scout or to scavenge or even like eliminate instant violence and you better believe mecha 2 is going to step up if he's just there out of circumstance like he got bopped in the last mission and washed up on the shore or you know wound up there not purposefully and has to like integrate then you have a much greater sense of building tension as the other robots try to welcome him in and signals like oh good welcome and then I imagine there would be this undercurrent of tension between him and Mecha 2. I feel like there's got to be some kind of rivalry there, just, just by the nature of their designs and their purposes. And Mecha 2 knows exactly what Metal Sonic is for and would have his own kind of existential crisis of, well, he was made to be a killer Sonic robot, and look what he is now. So shouldn't Metal also have the opportunity for a rebound repurposing, but he's dangerous. Cause he knows, Oh, he knows he's dangerous, but so is he, what does he do? Is this the kind of thing Sonic thinks about? Oh God, is he turning into Sonic? Wouldn't that make metal Sonic even angrier? If he was the one true Sonic, I'm getting off course again. Yeah. 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 
What if Knuckles and Amy decide to go to Scrapnik Island? Reason. No idea. Maybe finding emerald shards, I guess. Reason can be anything. Would they be amazed with the environment and its inhabitants? How would they interact with the Scrapniks and both mechas? Do both mechas go easy on Knucks? I would imagine Amy knows about this. I'd have to reread Scrap Nick Island, but I don't think Sonic and Tails swore it to secrecy necessarily. And even if they did, they're going to tell Amy. You know, <laughs> Amy's part of the group. The only reason why Knuckles wouldn't be in the loop is just because, you know, he's away so often. He's over so there. Catching up to yeah. yeah. But she would be, you know, the immediate vehicle of explanation here. Knuckles is like, oh, my God, robots. And she's like, no, no, good robots. And he's like, why do we keep running the good robots? I want to bash up bad robots. Uh, definitely some tension with Mecha 2. Oh, yeah. You know, Knuckles kind of beat the crap out of him. And uh, Knuckles would be his typical gracious and insightful self. <laughs> Not antagonistic, just a little braggy. You know, just look at him over. Man, I really did a number on you. And Mecha's just kind of looking at him. <laughs> mecha knuckles though yeah they're gonna fight it's just gonna happen well i mean like sigma's it's gonna be cool really upset about it. it's like oh no i really hope it didn't come to this name is like just be happy they're doing it over there let him get it out of their system <laughs> trust me this is for the best you know after they go a few rounds and mecha's barely held together and knuckles is thoroughly roughed up they're just kind of sitting there glaring at each other Knuckles just nice hat. Ah, <laughs> uh, good old Knuckles, my boy. And then they're bros. I mean, sure they punch each other every ch chance they get, but they're bros. Well, they're bash bros, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Beautiful, beautiful. Does Mimic like slasher movies? Do these movies' kills leave him inspired? Which slasher franchise and movie is his favorite? Scream, Halloween, etc.? And do you imagine Roger L. Jackson's ghost-faced voice for Mimic? Why I choose that voice? Because it's Tabby Wabby. I imagine Mimic is mostly frustrated with slasher movies. Because typically, your marks aren't that stupid. Maybe a little oblivious... You know, that, the whole point is to catch them off guard, but come on, they're running out in the open. They're making no effort to hide. They're screaming. They're giving away their position. <laughs> he would be able to have finished this 10 times over. Why are you walking so slow for he's just finished the job? <laughs> Don't announce yourself with the chi 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 ha ha ha. Come on. Show a little bit of her professionalism. Nah, I, I feel like he overthinks the films. He's too much a professional. He criticizes them for all their <laughs> all their flaws. <laughs> they did it wrong. <laughs> it's kind of like the Legal Eagle YouTube channel, but just for mur murderers. Um, yes. <laughs> and uh, the ghost face voice, yeah, that could work all right for him, I suppose. Sure. I have a dumb but good enough question that I'm so curious about that I must ask. If Shadow took off his inhibitor rings from his ankles only, does it change anything? Same powers, etc. We saw X Shadow using all inhibitor rings to stop the arc from crashing towards Earth. So I was wondering if the ankle rings were either equal to the wrist rings or have a slight difference. The only time we've really seen it, seen it in the games that I can immediately recall is in 06. And then he drops, he just drops the wrist ones, I think. And in X, that's also when he's going super. So it's really hard to gauge exactly what he's doing. Mm hmm. So I would imagine it's, you know, if he loses the wrist ones or the ankle ones, it's just too off. And therefore it's the same amount of power being released. Yeah. Yeah. It's just whether you're rele releasing all the power out of his feet, out of his hands or out of both at the same time, which what does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> How does the prelate naming process work? The only ones named so far are prelates V, M, R, C, E, S, and J, S for Vector, Mighty, Ray, Charmy, SBO, Saffron, and Julie Sue. From what it looks like, they all use the first letter of their name only, with J, S being an exception. For Jed and Amy, I could see it probably as prelates J and prelate A. 
But what about those with already the same letter at the beginning, like Sally and Shadow? Would Sally and Shadow be prelate SA and prelate SH? What are each of the unnamed prelates called? For the sake of this not going forever, unless you can speed run this, let's do the simplest ones. You might need a wiki to verify. Here's the thing. When we were putting that story together, the naming convention was immediately evident how limited it was. Uh Uh-huh. So we didn't name any of the others on purpose. (laughs) It was one of those, this is what we need for this story. We're never coming back to it. It's okay. There is no greater thinking to it. You're right. It's the first letter of the name. And Julie Sue, JS, it's kind of a hyphenated name, so we went with that. But Mm -hmm. yeah, there was no great list of prelate names. It's, you know, if you want to think of it as just the first letter, then there's, sure, tons of prelate S's. Tons of prelate T's, Q's, R's, whatever. There's going to be overlap, but there is no official list of names. It was just like when you get to the giant crowd shot of all the prelates, script wise, it was just, you know, it's prelate Dulcy, it's prelate Shadow, it's just, you know, prelate whoever. We're not going to name them because it's going to be silly otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like there's like a zillion Ian's and a zillion Kyle's in the world too. So, yeah. You know, eh, eh. But our favorite prelate, that would be B for bivalve. <laughs> <laughs> With over a thousand Pokemon existing, how is this franchise not dead? We have many choices to what Pokemon the Sonic cast could pick. So what would be their starter and what would be their next Pokemon? If you want to go the extra mile for a whole team of six, go ahead. No. Not, we don't that, have enough that time. It's exponential real quick. We don't have enough time for that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I guess, let's see. I, we finally reached a point where I've kind of fallen off the Poke Wagon. Um, you know, it took me a while. I was really, I was still pretty much into it around sun and moon. And then it's like, you know what? I've kind of run out of gas for this. Mm-hmm. I still kind of keep tabs on it out of you know just fondness but i don't know man some of these (laughs) designs what they do to the starters you had pokemon spain with a little duck looking conquistador type of thing you have the whole i don't care if it's not legitimate you have the whole weapon theme amongst the water starters you could have given them a lance you could have had duck quixote it was right there right in front of you and you didn't do it you went with some kind of weird mardi gras thing no never forgive you also the cat could have this great like thorn fanged smilodon but no 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 again we're doing mardi gras or whatever no stay on all fours don't get up right dad come it anyway you're getting you're getting you're getting into the weeds here I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, let, let's go with the core four. So Sonic, he's going to go with uh, whatever's the speediest one he can come across. Uh, who is the fast one? Is it Greninja, ultimately? He's fast. He's blue. Sonic will go with that. <laughs> uh, Knuckles, ultimately, I can see him going with Incineroar. They will tag team match everybody together. They will absolutely pump you up. You up, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Amy, <laughs> which starter Pokemon can learn Woodhammer? Anybody? Am I reaching too far for the joke? Most likely. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I'm trying to remember all, what is it now? 12, 15 starters? No, 21? No, we're up to Gen 9 now, aren't we? So is that 27? Good night. Um... Da, 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 da. What's that one called? Hold on. You're on your own for this one, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At least I know where to research. This won't take me too long. <laughs> Maybe pre marina for Amy. You know, kind of lovely, kind of feminine, also will blow you up if necessary, potentially. And uh Tails? We're gonna be boring and just say Charizard. He's a Gen Oneer. Tails is a purist. They go flying together. There. There you go. <laughs> all right. Was that all of them? Is that everybody? Good enough? That's enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
guess you could say like Surge and Kid. Surge gets an electrode, I'm being told, and Kit gets a uh, magic carp. <laughs> I like that. I like that just fine. <laughs> I mean, this question is rife for exploration. You know, any singular character, what their main team of six would be, could be debated into the ground. And there's probably no one right answer. So if you think you know what you want in this kind of scenario, list it in the comments below. I don't know who this gi- who this pink cat is with a giant purple hammer. I don't know who that is, but they might be good for Amy. Tinkaton. Yeah, that's one of the new ones. It's a... Okay. Was it a fairy type? Fairy steel? Well. <laughs> who gets missing? No. Starline. <laughs> Works for me. They look the same at this point. Works for me. With Sonic and Blaze's worlds and the Chaos and Soul Emeralds being inextricably linked and semi similar, do you think that there is Soul Dimension equivalence of the Ancients? Would they be the Futurists? No, wait, that sounds like something from Moebius. <laughs> uh, I don't know, and I hope not. Um,. There being some parallels between the two dimensions is fine, but I I hope there isn't like full one to one comparisons between the two. I kind of like the Soul Emeralds being oddly coherent and uniform versus the Chaos Emeralds, but we'll see. Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll see. And the last question: Have you ever played or heard of Omori? It is an Earthbound-esque RPG game similar to Undertale that features some horror elements. The game covers many stuff like mental health, trauma, friendship, and self-discovery. The game has emotional depth and thought-provoking storytelling. Visually, it looks stunning. I highly recommend it. I remember seeing commercials for it and going, nope, too spooky for me. (laughs) I have heard of it, and I have seen... Yeah, I guess I have seen that. uh, Looking Now looking it up, seeing the cover... The main art. Yeah, I've seen that art before. And I have heard some of the music's really good. Not gonna lie. But uh, other than that, I don't really know. I, I do not know. I am not familiar otherwise. So. But who knows? Maybe someday I'll play it. Either way, great music though. Thank you to Hero Squad for sponsoring this Bumblecast Mini. If you want one of your own, head over to patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, or become a YouTube member. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. See you later.